We don't even need to clap anymore. I like when you clap. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Thank you. laughs> Wrestling buddies want to be your buddy. What's going on? Hey, buddy. Buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling of Padres Slamcast right here on Fox Sports. Of course, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Fox Compadres. Another bonus episode. You know, at this point, we're essentially twice a week, aren't we? Yes, I mean, it's not a bonus anymore. Yeah, it's, it's just a second episode. It's just a second episode, and it's an amazing episode. First off, I'm Johnny LaQuasto at Jay Quasto. This is Carlin Bathe. I'm at Carlin Bathe on everything. And he is Scott Narver at Curtain Jerks on most things that matter. <laughs> <laughs> and Dale Rutledge is in Florida still, but you could find him on Twitter at The Walking Dale. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We're thrilled to have her in studio. She's a three-time WWE Women's Champion, two-time Divas Champion, proud member of the Ringside Salute Tour, and she's about to head overseas for quite a journey to multiple continents, I think, right? Yes. She's <laughs> Melina. What's up, girl? <laughs> Nothing much. Everything's going good. Last time I saw you, we were about to get on a long flight. Yep. <laughs> I forget what we airport. We had a, a oh. long tour um, in Iraq and Kuwait. So first off, I mean, how? what was it like for you to do that? Because I know you've done things like that before. With WWE, kind of, right? Yeah. Well, with WWE, you know, we it's it's quick, and we have like a schedule, and it's like bop, 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 really quick. So, but this time around with you guys with the Ringside Salute, we got to take our time. We got to visit every camp and, and enjoy things and have fun, and it was just an incredible experience. I feel like not only were we there to to make them smile and to bring like home to them. But they gave us a lot. Like, they gave me a lot. They made, they made me think about what's, like, to appreciate life and to also show us what their, you know, their specialties are. Then they were proud of it and made me proud of them. You know, and for some reason, more. you got more hugs than the rest of the people on tour. <laughs> like, you guys should have seen. Were you wearing deodorant, Johnny? <laughs> I was. And cologne most of the time. Oh, you double dipped. I you're always you're double too dip. much. Yeah. <laughs> too much. <laughs> the so enemy will know where you are if you wear too much uh, uh, scented. I, it's insect repellent, actually, not cologne. Oh, okay. Um, oh but no, it's so funny. You should have seen what some, some, of the, some of the male troops, of course, and women actually went crazy for you, but like there were a handful of, of male troops that when they found out that you were going to be there, and they saw it. What about that one dude that almost lost his damn mind? He, so he wanted cute. pictures and videos. I think he hugged you like three times. Yeah. And he was like, of me. our of our, um, our questions and everything, he just came up. He's like, I'm sorry. He just walked up and he gave me a hug. He's like, sitting oh. right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus. He he's so much stronger then. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> but yeah, what, what a tour it was. Um, and what a weekend you had this past weekend in Santa Barbara. So you walked 39 miles yeah. in support of the <laughs> Avon Breast Cancer Crusade. Now that, you know, obviously Avon, they do a lot of good things. They funded over 260,000 mammograms last year. They're helping those at risk and those who are also fighting breast cancer and trying to find treatments for the future. What got you involved with this? And what was it like walking 39 miles in less than two days? Oh my goodness. Everybody was asking me. I think they were trying, they were gonna, they were expecting like some crazy story of how I, I got inspired, but it, it was just something that just happened. Driving along one of these long rides, like two hour drives. And I heard this on um, 102.7 and i heard 39 miles mm. i was like what and then i it just hit me that i want to be a part of something like this it, it's my grandfather died of lung cancer my um aunt died of um, bone cancer so it's like i want to be able to raise money for all types of cancer but this seemed like it was inspiring because i was listening to the stories on the commercial and you have cancer survivors walking 39 miles. So not only is there cancer survivors, but there's also people who are undergoing chemo who are trying their best to walk the, walk, um, the 39 miles. And it's so inspiring and incredible. Like it, 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 to me, I have no reason to not do that. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a journey to walk with these people and to raise money to support them. And it was just an amazing event. Like I was in tears. They had stories, you had people, to, um, telling like what they went through what their family went through and how they appreciate and love life like there's this one lady um for the last six years every year she was diagnosed with something crazy like Whoa. it was colon cancer then pancreatic cancer then it was um um 
some other cancer up until like just last year she was diagnosed with breast cancer so she's stage four but every she kept saying i'm here and i'm still fighting it and i am gonna appreciate every day that i'm alive and i just started crying and made me think like you know we we don't appreciate life as much as we should and there's people out there fighting the good fight trying to survive each and every day when some of us just complain about the traffic <laughs> which is bad <laughs> <I> mean, <we laughs> all, <laughs> traffic's bad <laughs> we all do so this woman was walking the, the miles uh not the one that was um um stage four but there was other women that was in my team that mm. that was undergoing chemo that was walking the 39 miles wow that's crazy it's incredible yeah i just it changed my perspective i mean you already have a good perspective though i mean the entire time on tour you never took the smile off your face. And, and let's be honest, it was exhausting. And there were a lot of nights we didn't have sleep. The travel schedule in Iraq was a disaster half the time. And every time I look over to Melina, hi. Just, you were just happy the whole time. And I'm telling you, you were so amazing. with the, And you were the only woman on tour, which isn't the easiest when you're dealing with a bunch of dummies like me and Anderson and Shane and, and uh, what, Melendez and Scotty. So like you just were constantly just happy the whole time. And never forgot like why we were there, and that was really like kudos to you for that because we had a really good team, I think. But you were just oh man, a, yeah, a we doll did the whole time. Team. Thank you, yeah. you're such a sweetheart. And like, everyone said that too. Well, not <laughs> not coming from me, but like even people in Armed Forces Entertainment were like, "Man, Melina's just a champ." So. Oh, thanks. To me, I, I mean, I didn't. I expected it to be rough. You know what I mean? Just like the way I expected this like thirty nine mile deal to be rough. I expected to camp out. I expected that if I had any makeup, it'd be all over the place. Like we're gonna sweat. It's gonna be <laughs> dirty. Like I expect these things, so it's not a surprise. So I don't know. It just there's nothing to complain about in my mm -hmm. mind. I'm just appreciating every moment, and everybody inspires me and motivates me. I don't know. I just have like this year, it just seems like I have this this outlook on life that I appreciate everything. And I don't know. I don't know. You it can just, feel it when you walk in the room. Like even when you're walking down the hallway, I'm like, that's her. There she is. She's like just, just bubbly persona, <laughs> which is, that's a good thing. That's which a really good thing. completely opposite from my, my in-ring character. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little. But. Therapy. That's when all the traffic feelings come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything else is like, oh, all right. I'm gonna tear you it's apart. It's time. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, my goodness. This is for that extra thing you made me pay for. <laughs> 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 with this, like, new positive, I don't even know if I would say it's new, but with this positive outlook on, like, life that you have and um, with you just having done that 39-mile walk, what's the next thing for you in that kind of realm? Like, what's the next event that you want to do to help people or mm -hmm. what's kind of oh. your next walk or something that you've been eyeing that you're really interested in? Do you have anything on the horizon? There's two that I'm looking at. One... I am going to have to do not this next one, but the one after that. But there's a Disney Star Wars one. Hey, that's <laughs> what? that's rad. We're in. And, huh, yeah. Helping do you want underprivileged to? nerds. It's yeah. <laughs> the one I want to walk for. You can like, you can go into it. Um, just play a, pay a flat fee and just do it. Cool. But I want to do for suicide prevention. There you go. So I want to support that and um, raise money for that. And there's another one that I want to walk with my friend Kimberly. So she's um, an indie worker. Mm -hmm. Everybody, most people know her. So mm -hmm. if you don't know her, look her up. She's mm -hmm. amazing. She good. Yeah. So the one I want to do with her, it's going to be on um, Valentine's Day. Oh, fun. And it's, it's, um, it goes to children. It's to raise money for children. I forget which, um, I, we barely looked it up about two days ago. So we looked it up and I forget what it was, if it was for preemies or if it was for um kids who were abused i'm not sure which um it's helping kids was. no matter yeah. what yes. yeah yeah but the funny thing is is that it's an undie run mm -hmm. so you <laughs> what? run interesting what? <laughs> now i know scott does this on weekends but yeah. like what no is one, an exact yeah. organized undie run he doesn't pay an entry fee <laughs> <laughs> I Andy believe run? it. No, you, I believe it. Okay. Just out of yes. night terrors, they just wake up and then run down the street. That's what we're gonna do. That's helping out people with night terrors. That's wonderful. Yeah. Scott takes an ambient and all bets are off. Yeah. Oh my goodness! When I heard about this, I was like, okay, we're raising money for kids, but it's an excuse to run in, uh, run in public in my underwear. Sure. Mm-hmm. 
in the winter time. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it's technically it's winter. It's so it's going to be in Philadelphia. I was going to say, oh, like a, are a you California serious? California winter? Yeah. Or what it's are we talking about? So there's going to yeah. be snow. <laughs> What, okay, that's wait, a different wh- story. Oh, when like, is this? Oh my goodness. It's going to be on um, Valentine's Day. Oh my God. I was like, best Valentine's Day ever. Heck running yeah. around in the streets in my underwear. That's like the <laughs> coldest of the cold in Pennsylvania at that time. Oh, I Bucky, yeah. You know, Shit. you know, Johnny. Yeah. yeah. Rocky Balboa's got nothing on that with this no. type of training. He like, ran that in is, sweats. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Holy I'm smokes. so gonna do. do what is your plan stuff? for Steps. outfit? Are you talking? We're just talking underwear, Johnny. I mean, it's an under- it's a yeah, under- yeah, but there one is might no coordinate outfit. the underwear, or you go a mishmash of like, yeah, these don't match, but whatever. Maybe some gloves. What? A, what, <laughs> what about a, a onesie? Wait, so, <laughs> that's not underwear. With footy pajamas. Yeah, you're missing. Oh. No. He's like 1930s. No. See, she gets it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. 19, I go to sleep with a hat with a little cap on it, and he has a candle, and he walks through the house. That's what I do. Wow, that's amazing! <laughs> you got to tell us about that so we can, you know, mention yeah, on the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm gonna document it. I'm like, God. this is what's going on, everybody. I'm in my underwear. <laughs> 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 this is like a step away from streaking. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. very close. <laughs> How like, long is the run? <laughs> oh, it's not long. When Kimberly told me, she when she told me it was only, um, I looked it up. It was only a mile. I was like, oh, oh I can oh, do that. <laughs> that's that's really really far. <laughs> <laughs> That is long. In your undies. Oh my goodness. I got like a block and a half and I'm done. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. But I just did 39 miles. So nothing's, sure. does, nothing seems as far as that now. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, so you're about to go to the middle. Um, I'm not the Middle East. already were there. You're about to go to the UK yeah. and Australia, Ireland. You're going on a big oh, run. Yeah, I'm going to Australia in December. Jesus. But first things first though. You're about to have your first singles competition in over four years. Yeah. Uh, Southside Wrestling out of England in the Queen of the Ring tournament, Sunday, October 2nd. So, who made you mad? Yeah. Who made you mad? Yeah. Oh, who man, fired I, you up? I, who I, called you out? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody called me out. What happened is um, SWE Southside Wrestling, like, they've always been great to me. And because of how great they were to me, I told them I will come back. And I planned on coming back, like, as for a tag match, something simple. You know, just for them. The only time I wanted to wrestle, just for them. And they presented this thing to me, and it was a tournament, and I thought, that'd be amazing because I would love to... I've never had a chance to work with some of the indie girls, and now there's this amazing group of talent, and it just seems... It's just... I can't pass it up. I just can't. Just to see what I... If I still got it, if I still am able to you know, wrestle the way I used to and if my style can mesh with their style because, Mm. you know, it's changed. It's evolved since I've been gone. Take that a little bit further. So we obviously know your career. We've watched your matches. I mean, you talk about how the styles have changed, but your style, I mean, you mixed it up really with some great people. What do you mean as far as styles change? Like a stiffer style? Like what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. People are more, um, the women are more high-flying now. They're more high-flying, more... um, aggressive like they're more stiffer yeah but then i like that though that's the way jillian worked that's the way gail worked you know but this is just a different group of girls or i should say women who they they created their own kind of style that i would love to see how my character would would mesh with their characters Hmm. that's pretty awesome that's what i love about wrestling like say People can talk trash about my era of um, wrestlers, but for me, they were always, it was always beautiful to see what their characters, whether they were models or not, Mm -hmm. can, what we can create. Right. Because to me, that's the beauty of wrestling. It's like you, you're, that's what you're, as a wrestler, you are supposed to make something happen, magic happen, no matter who your opponent is. And different people are going to react different ways. And I loved each person I worked with because then I got to see what I can create off of that. What are your plans? You might not know this question or the answer to this question. What are your plans after this first match back in four years? Are you like, all right, guys, I'm back. I'm in the ring every other week. Like, what? <laughs> where do you envision um, your wrestling career going after that comeback? Well, it's not like I'm, I'm not setting out to to be back full time, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm setting out to enjoy the moment. So like right now I'm going to the UK, then I go to Ireland, then I go to Australia and I just want to go and 
visit the countries and like work with people that I've always wanted to work with or I saw in the um online and mm-hmm. thought oh I wonder how it would be like to work with them like I want to be able to experience these moments but also enjoy the travels because I never really got to do that yeah in, in the WWE like that, I loved the, everything about the WWE and my experience there but we we're always it's a machine mm. you know you go from yep. one place to the next place next place like boom 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 it's funny hearing the mind of a wrestler when they watch wrestling videos like oh I wonder what it's like to work with her we watch wrestling videos and we're like we can't ever do that yeah <laughs> <laughs> that never crosses my mind <laughs> that's that's really cool though but do whenever you watch it do you ever like pretend you get all ha- like amped up and then you start pretending <laughs> oh we pretend a lot yeah, yeah. yeah. Watching, like, security UFC. comes by they tell us to cut it out yeah. uh, and we get tasered i try uh, and get my chops to echo on scott yeah. but it just doesn't i, I right. rake scott's back all the time yeah. he, he always knows <laughs> sells. Yeah. so in your mind you think like oh i can't do that but you're oh, already sure. acting it out that's like the first step, I think. True. And then you get, and then you know, that's getting your feet wet, and then you start doing more and more until you become one. Oh boy! So it's possible. That's my trajectory. <laughs> I better stop watching. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, you talk about. Uh, you mentioned a little bit before that your your class of wrestlers gets trash talked. Yeah, I don't know. Is that I mean, is that a more recent occurrence because of? How they're they've repackaged the women. They've re they're they're selling the women's era now in a different light, and yeah. almost undercutting previous eras. Is that what you're involved in right now? That you feel is happening? Yeah, it's so weird. Um, and all what I'm going off of is only what I've read, like on Twitter or sure. something like that. Like mm-hmm. I really don't search for any of this stuff yeah to so your credit you know. never have you've never been like the person that just reads dirt sheets or like you really don't you no. you when you walked away you really walked away. Yeah, and the only thing I've ever heard is either my brother would say, oh, I heard this, or like I'd read it on my mentions. Mm-hmm. I kind of don't go any further than that. Right. So I only go off of what somebody has sent me. And I'm like, oh, maybe I have time to read it, maybe I don't. But it seems like it's havesy havesy. Uh, there's people who, who miss our era, miss like, they miss Candace, they miss Beth, they miss Mickey, they miss... Um, Kelly Kelly. Or, yes, yeah. they do. They miss Kelly Kelly, and then they miss Michelle McCool. Like, yep. they miss our er- like, they miss the girls. And then there's other people who trash talk it. So it's like, yeah. I think it's 50-50. So I think people just, not everybody appreciates what they have when they have it. Mm-hmm. That's just the way it goes for some reason. And you mentioned a few minutes ago about how everyone said your your group or your generation was a bunch of models, but you just mentioned some names that I don't think anyone looks at you guys as models, whether it's you and Beth and Mickey, Michelle McCool. I mean, every one of you guys brought it. And we, we just watched last night your the False Count Anywhere match with Mickey. That shit was crazy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work with her some more. Well, you like, can. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hopefully. That would be amazing. Oh my goodness. But yes, I think um, I do hear stuff about sometimes about like it's the model era. I think somebody brought it up to somebody or maybe it was brought up to Kelly Kelly. But um, yeah, that may be the case. But the thing is, is that I respect anybody who goes into the ring yep. at all because it's a, an intimidating um place to be and it can be scary. And if anybody is willing to take a bump, uh, to me, that's just makes me proud because they're willing to 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 be a part of what I love so much, mm-hmm. and obviously they love it enough to try to do it, and not only try to do it but actually execute it. It's just I'm proud of them. I'm proud of everybody who's uh, contributed to the to wrestling, and our era, we held up the front. I mm-hmm. think they talk about women's revolution or the um, women's wrestling revolution. That's been going on for decades. Like mm-hmm. it's not just us. It's um, decades before us. Like it's been happening every, every year. And all we do each and every year is keep fighting the good fight until one day, you know, who knows where we can take it. That's the wonder to me. Who knows where we're trying to take it. But each year we keep trying to take it further and further and further. Because is it always fighting that machine? Is it sometimes the machine is in favor of it and you're fighting against it of when they're not and saying like, no, we can do this. We can go out there and we can hang with the guys. and We can do innovative, cool stuff. Well, it could be the machine, but sometimes it's also the um, the fans too. Like sometimes okay. the fans will say, we want this, we want this, we want this. But the ratings show that I think it was back in our time, it was kind of like, 
we wanted to execute these amazing matches, but the ratings showed that maybe the pillow matches were more like, yeah. were, like people were drawing into that. Sure. Right? So it's kind of like sometimes we're fighting the, the machine and sometimes we're fighting off um, to break barriers for the people who are even watching. Right. So I understand the fact that that we needed to incorporate some of that. When, to me, when I watched in the 90s, we had both. We had badass wrestling and then we had... Um, you know, Stacy Keebler and Tori Wilson doing their thing, you know, mm-hmm. and it was, I, I accepted that because that was, I wanted to see girls who were pretty and then I wanted to see girls who were hardcore. I wanted to see everything and that was the beauty of wrestling at that time is you saw different characters from different um, spectrums. We see that with men too and I think people yeah, forget. Yeah. We see the like big, strong, perfect yeah. model looking male and then like the burly guys and then the, the then Bray Wyatt's of the world. No, but it's Bray Wyatt. But you no, know what but I mean? then the you have, you're right. But the men, different body yeah. types, or even the the character types that are doing comedy or something like that, where it's like we're not to take them seriously as yeah. these yeah. Uh, contenders and fighters. It's, sure. Yeah, it's a variety show. Yeah. There should be variety. And that's why I love the cruiserweights. And then you got the like the big guys like um, a Big Show. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah. and then you get your little little guys. Yeah. So. I love seeing different characters, and that's the beauty of wrestling, too. It's like Ken, every time someone would ask Ken a question about wrestling on the tour, Ken Anderson would always say, wrestling is like ice cream. If you just give someone vanilla, they're going to get sick of vanilla. There's different flavors, and there's something for everybody. It's like Dusty Rhodes sure as hell didn't look like Hulk Hogan, but I'll be damned if the fans didn't love Dusty often just as much as they love Hulk Hogan, just like in this generation. Kevin Owens and Bray Wyatt aren't exactly uh, underwear models, but they get the job done and people relate to them. Whereas then you have other guys who are just perfect tens that you know are also doing their thing, just like I think in the women's generation now. And I think the internet also just tends to backlash. Like Sasha Banks mentioned the butterfly title, the stupid looking butterfly title. I don't think that was a knock on the wrestlers holding it. Right. That was just that they were glad to get the new title. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, I don't know. I didn't watch it. But then you have to understand that maybe... Maybe it was something that was personal to her. Maybe she actually did say it and mean it. Or maybe it was written for her to say. True. So it probably wasn't even her saying it, but she had to say it because it was written for her. I don't know. So I can't really say. But when it comes to the butterfly title, like I understand a championship is a championship. You fight for it. You earn it. You win it. And you have to, you have to measure up, like measure yourself up to be able to be, somebody who's worth holding it like it not only earning it but it's just like i look at it when i held that title and i had to hold myself to a certain standard standard and to another level now that i was holding it and i think each and every woman who wins that has to to see that and look at that so every title no matter what it like what it looks like it's a title you earned and that you have to be a role model for and and you know fight the next person and see if you're going to keep it or not but the Divas title, the reason why I didn't like it when it changed into the Divas championship or the Divas title, the butterfly title, was because the women's championship the, had the barbed wire and everything. You had China holding it, Trish, Lita, mm-hmm. Molly Holly, you know, Jacqueline, Jazz, you know, all the people that I loved seeing held that title, that exact same title. Like I could put pictures of all of us together and I'll look at it and be like, I held the same exact title as they did. Like that was an amazing experience where I, when I won it, I couldn't believe that my dream came true, that my, you know, the people I looked up to held that same title. Like it, it's such an incre- like incredible feeling. But when they changed it to the Divas title, I feel like any of the girls who held that couldn't have that same experience. That it just wasn't the same. So it's just like, it was hmm, kind of like made me, f- my heart broke a bit. Right. But it still was worth earning. So no matter how it looked like, it was, it's still worth something. Do you remember where you were when you found out that it was changing over from the women's title? Because you were right in the middle of all oh, of that yeah. change. Trading back and forth and all that stuff. I yeah. can't remember where I was. I'm wondering if it was, yeah, you know, what? I don't even remember if I was on SmackDown or Raw. I think I was going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And then they said, oh, you know what? I was coming back from an injury, wasn't I? I think it was. I think you got yeah, traded while happened. you were hurt, maybe, Scotty, yes. something like that. Could be, yeah. 
Yep, I think those, that's what those happened. Those were crazy times to try and keep track of all that stuff. <laughs> like they were, they were hot shotting you all the time. That's yeah, true. But it, to me, I, I loved it because, I don't know, I love the challenge of it all. I, I hated it because I miss like my friends that I would travel with. Right. So then it's like, oh, I leave my friends and then go to a new school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then uh, it made me proud that I was able to bring something to each brand. So it's to me, it was always a challenge and a beautiful art. Like I love working live on now. It's different now. It's all live, right? Yep. All mm -hmm. live. But I love the the challenge of like being live on Raw. And then back then when it came to SmackDown being pre-taped, that was an art in itself too to pretend it's live because some people get used to being it pre-taped and they, they don't try as hard mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, it's okay. It's pre-taped. mess up, we can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for me, I, I always pretend it, it, it was live, mm -hmm. live every time. So it's just, I don't know. I was proud working each way. That's great. Well, when they introduced the Divas title as something new and what you talked about with there being a the legacy before with the women's title that you could look up to it and see it. Yeah, right. Was there was there ever a thought in your mind that now you're now you're responsible or, or the other women are responsible for creating a new legacy that you're step one with a diva's title at the time? Yeah, I I love that fact. Like it's okay, we're we're cre um, we're creating the legacy of this title, um, the worth of this title, title, the value of it. And to me, it was just amazing to think that. But at the same time, it's like wow we have to start from scratch like mm -hmm. we really had to start from scratch because the look was so girly and you know it's just the way people saw it so for me it was easy on my part because the way i held it the way you know the way I, it like i came out with it but it's trying to make everybody else believe in the same thing that was the challenge was that a, was was there a backlash of that title? Do you remember back? Because I mean, we still was Twitter was still not around yet. Two thousand seven, oh, I think, there? is when it started. Yeah, two thousand eight was when Twitter. But it just Maybe. wasn't. It yeah. just wasn't as. We're doing um, tout. As, was tout a thing? You know, tout was definitely not as a big as it is now. Right. Okay. Okay, so it was let, you dealt with a lot less of that stuff then at the time. Yeah, it, it was so weird. It's a fifty fifty thing too. Like people didn't like it, but then at the same time every kid loved it and every person who did not know wrestling would see the title and think that is so beautiful right. yeah. so it drew in people who weren't really you know part of wrestling right so it's it's an odd thing but to me again the beauty of wrestling you could take anything and make it work so that's what i believe in i believe that you could take anything and make it work if you believe in it and you just you know make magic with it it's possible and there have been titles that have spun. There are titles that were just totally <laughs> sure. smashed up and glued together. It's, it is always about the performer ultimately. Right. I think that's yeah. what Mick Foley had said uh, post SummerSlam that he was talking about mm -hmm. that, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what the performer brings to it and makes it mean. So yeah, it's and that's the issue with today. Social media. These kids, yeah, they these just go, kids like they so went crazy over the universal title and they ruined a main event by screaming. I don't even remember what they said. The title sucks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad Mick out, out, you know, did an outlash at them or whatever the word is I'm looking for. Cause it, it's, it's about the person. Yeah. It's, it, it is about the substance. And maybe that's sometimes the, the challenge that needs to be put out there. If, if people are jumping on and saying these things, the networks out there, they can go back and watch these matches. I mean, one of the ones I brushed up on was, uh, it was a night of champions and it was you and Michelle McCool and you guys oh. did, crazy crazy mm -hmm. stuff you did your signature split entrance and then she kicked me off she kicked you right <laughs> oh, off God. to start right off the bat to set a tone of this is not a typical match of any kind this is a this is almost a blood feud like you guys are really yeah. going after each other and you did a ddt on the barricade <laughs> not like into the barricade not around the barricade you stood atop of it had the balance and you took the brunt of it. <laughs> oh. I mean, what you were doing then, like earlier when you're talking about the, the styles and, you know, you, I think, helped set a tone for this era of what Sasha's doing, yeah. for what Charlotte's doing, of sometimes taking really, really <laughs> crazy risks. I mean, it's now nice that you're here and sitting here and you walked on your own <laughs> volition, but it's scary. And you and Mickey did the same, very similar things. 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's what oh, I love. And I'm blessed to have worked with amazing people that also had the same kind of desire and dream that I like that I have. We had it together and we all had the same like ambitions where it came to, this is what we always wanted wrestling to be like for us. This is the dream. Let's do it. So, and then we did it together because, you know, one person can't do anything in the ring. No, you need mm -hmm. another person there to make magic. And I was blessed to have people like that. But thank you for saying that, that we set the tone. Like, I feel like when, when we came in, it was really tough because Trish was leaving, Lita was leaving. It's like every, the, the two main women that everybody loved left mm. and everybody was so angry and it's like no other diva no other female wrestler would do because their favorites are gone mm -hmm. so it's kind of like we had to get that back we had to like fill this gap and it took a while to get there but we try to keep that alive like to do something with it and if we could if people can see that that's amazing if not it's okay that's part of life and you know if we're not going to be acknowledged for it that's the price we pay to try to like keep it going but in my mind every time they did a pillow fight it was more like when the time when the time came to where we get to have a match we're gonna do it mm -hmm. we're gonna hit it hard so i don't know i'm proud that we like we did our best for, with what we had very true and I, I think i know the answer to this but favorite performer that you ever worked with kevin federline there you go <laughs> is it kfed <laughs> Yeah, I knew it. Nailed it. Sorry to take yeah, it away from you like that, but nailed it, Scotty. Scotty's been waiting to say Kevin Federline for months on the show. <laughs> <laughs> said it to Jeff Jarrett. He's like, "Stop it! Yeah. Get away from me!" You've done it. Let it be. <laughs> you said it Get, to out him. No. <laughs> Get out of here! Get out of here! Slam like, nuts. What's with you and K Fed. <laughs> what do you mean performer? As, performer as far as like favorite West? opponent, favorite person you work with. I mean, I, I I know you obviously love Mickey James. You already oh, mentioned yeah. that. Um, I know. Jillian, I know that we you talked about this before, how guilty you were the night when Jillian Hall won the title and you took it from her seconds later and she was legit crying. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I was crying too, like beforehand, because I knew I knew this was my fault. You know what I mean? That I'm the one to do this to her. Like when I heard that she was gonna get the title, we celebrated. We we're like, Yay! About time, yes, you deserve it. And then all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, and you're gonna lose it to Melina. And uh, I oh man, I'm so uh, are you sure? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Can we sorry. wait a week, maybe? <laughs> Seriously. I'll still be here. Like, I could take it then. Oh, my goodness. But it went down the way. I mean, at least wait, like, later on down, like, in the show, right? Like, maybe wait a couple matches later, at nope. least. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I, I just told her, I said, I'm so sorry that I'm doing this to you. And she said, it's okay. You know, at least I'm losing it to my best friend. I was like, aw. Oh. It made me feel even worse. <laughs> <laughs> poor thing like she deserved like she deserved a moment that's what killed me it's like she deserved because she's amazing and a lot of people never got to see her work her work is incredible she's so strong too like not only strong where it comes to comes to like how aggressive she is in the ring but she's like seriously literally strong like she could pick you up like nothing mm. <laughs> she's so strong wow so, and a great uh, she, singer <laughs> She actually is. Oh, yeah? like, in real life, she really is. When we go to karaoke, she beautiful voice. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> was that something that was troublesome at the time that if maybe you were, because Jillian was so strong as a character and that's where she was brought in originally and then had to, she was known for doing character stuff. But if you're brought in to do a lot of wrestling stuff right away, are you almost typecast in that way that they see you doing one thing and then you're set to do that? Yeah, I think that's... Um... That's what happens. You get typecasted for sure. But in my mind, I guess my, my, my mind works in different ways where I see something, it's like, okay, I could do this, but I will figure out a way to slip it, slip something else in, like to get that, that wrestling edge in so that I won't be completely typecasted. Like that's what I think they expected me to be this Latina girl, you know, be all stereotypical when I didn't do that. It's like, yeah, I'll be the, I am the Hispanic girl. That is who I am. But I'm not going to get typecasted as that. I am more than that. That Absolutely. is just who I am. This That's who I am. But that's not everything that I am. And Jillian just didn't. She did. She fought hard. She like was aggressive in the ring. So she was great in the ring. But she just. 
I think she did. She played that character so well that you couldn't see anything else other than that. She was just too good for her own good. Which is a credit to her. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this for a second. So you have a lot of dogs. <laughs> yeah. A lot of we don't have to how, many how many is a lot? A lot of dogs. <laughs> how many? I got six dogs. What? <laughs> so if you Boy, had I... to be completely honest, what's your favorite breed of dog? They're not listening right now. They won't be offended. <laughs> and then what's your favorite dog that you own? Yeah. I know <laughs> oh, which favorite so dog of yours that which one? Charlie Bear. <gasps> He's my firstborn. Well, that that's <laughs> generally the favorite <laughs> i feel so bad but like i pay more attention to him because you know the look on his face is like hmm you you know you keep you bringing more kids me. in <laughs> so then like i try to make him feel better the other ones don't know any better because they like they're they've been around other dogs so yeah. they don't feel left out mm. but charlie bear what used to be the only dog like mm-hmm. he was the only child for so many years that he's used to being alone so it's kind of like hmm so you have six dogs yeah what are they i inherited one from my dad because he left like he moved back to he moved to mexico so he left me with his boxer he's 16 years old 16 year old boxer wow and because of the puppies the other dogs he pretends he's like spry and young (laughs) he's doing he's doing twirls and everything meanwhile he's got hip arthritis like ah these kids i can't be (laughs) seriously spinning like i used to so we got a 16 year old boxer. Um, we got Charlie Bear. Yeah, Charlie Bear. He's um, I think he's five already, or he's okay. gonna turn five this year. Uh, we have like um, uh, I got a rescue. He's half Chihuahua, half um, Rat Terrier. So okay, he looks like a mini collie. It's so cute. Whoa. He looks That's like adorable. a tiny collie. Okay. So I have um Bandit. That's Bandit. Then I have the two Pomeranians. One is a white. Oh, he looks like I love huskies. That's okay. So I love huskies, but I don't own a husky. So because of Charlie Bear, he's half Pomeranian, half poodle. Okay. I, I love poodle mixes, but now I'm sold on the Pomeranians because they're always so happy. Like, they're always oh smiling. <laughs> so we're at five, two Pomeranians. So we got the this? white one that looks okay. like a husky, and then the tiny one. I have a three and a half pound um, Pomeranian. He's pure black and he's going to be a year old next month. Which is Kovu's brother. Yes, yeah. Ash. Little Kovu, I think R.I.P. Keychains that are heavier than that dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, every time, if I ever hold like a, a three pound weight or something, I'm like, <laughs> that's how big he is <laughs> oh my god so if you want to go for a seventh i got a new breed for you i held one last weekend it's called a walrus what? it is a basset hound mixed with a sharp hay oh Stop i gotta it. see i gotta see it johnny is the most adorable uh, go ahead keep talking i'll look it up for you, you have yeah, a wrestling stable the of six- dogs <laughs> <laughs> seriously they're always wrestling i'm on knock it off <laughs> <laughs> like well we're watching you so <laughs> I know, right? How <laughs> terrible am I? Oh. Oh, <laughs> do boy. as I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a good name for a wrestling stable of dogs. I don't think oh, yeah. you can handle this, guy. Scott, you got to come up with it. Okay, work on before it. the end of the show. Before Stop I forget, my it. sixth dog yeah. is um, I held one. A, a pug. Aww. I found him I found him down in the street, like just walking around. And then I tried to find his owner. It took me a month to find his owner. Found him. His owner was horrible. <gasps> like so He didn't even him. care that he... No, no, no. I gave him back. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have given him back. He didn't even care. Left him in the like backyard out yeah. in the heat. What? Um, two months later, he found his way back to my house. <gasps> <laughs> wow. He was, just, he was just sitting on my porch. That's adorable. What? He did a five oh, goes west and somehow mine. found you? <laughs> wow. Snorting the whole time? That's amazing. Wow. Uh, show her that picture. So Marina, I don't, you're I not don't, ready. I don't want to feed the fire or anything. You're not ready for this But this, this is a walrus dog. You're not ready. <laughs> that looks oh my fake. God. I don't know why they call him a walrus other than because he's all wrinkly. The Sharpay so. face, maybe. Oh, my gosh. Maybe he they grow like tusks. A, I don't know. A big head and a small body. This isn't yeah. real. I'm telling you. Dog-ish. I, this is bringing out so much joy. There was a pet store near the comedy place I was working at in Chicago in Aurora. And I went in. They actually have all the puppies in this baby so cribs. Cute. Not cages. They're in baby cribs. For everyone just listening right now, yeah. please watch the YouTube video yes. of Melina seeing a walrus dog. <laughs> She's a Walter Matha on puppy form, right? <laughs> Not easy to find. She's almost in tears. Totally worth it. <laughs> so cute. 
I'm telling you, I didn't want to give him up. Oh my goodness, Johnny, why didn't you bring him home? We could uh, use a compadre canine. I know. Can you imagine? I could have brought him in every week. He could have peed all over the desk. <laughs> oh man. Oh my goodness. Part of me thinks like I want to have like a puppy daycare at one point because like I just want to have all these dogs. There's your future. <laughs> I mean, once you once you stop wrestling completely, puppy daycare sounds like a great idea for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll totally do it. <laughs> so are you a cat person at all? You know, I love cats. Oh, if I could, I'd have. What is it? Uh, si- not si- Is it si- Siamese, Siamese cats? Si- no. Tiger cat. Describe it. I might know. It has like a wrinkled face and it's like real fluffy oh, oh maybe this main time. main like, coon cat like grumpy cat Ooh, it has himalayan i want a himalayan cat oh. okay <laughs> yeah those are fluffy yes oh yeah so you do like cats okay yeah. tell her about toby. but i've never Go had ahead. one tell you, her about toby i have a cat named toby who's just really cute <laughs> he's I'll, so over toby's so he's over on my phone <laughs> i was waiting Hold for on. an experience have you seen friends where rachel gets the um siamese cat and she's like scratched up oh, all yeah. the place he's my lock screen oh cute yeah, he's a big Roman Reigns fan, mm-hmm. oh. so we talk about him often on the show. <laughs> we talk about him often. Toby's got his own segment on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my lock screen. <laughs> Charlie Bear's mine. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> my chosen dog. Gosh. <laughs> See, the truth comes out. Animals in general, they're just incredible. Yeah. Dogs or cats, they're just. <laughs> a few more fun questions. Uh, say you have a day off. Absolutely nothing to do. Who's the first person you call to hang out with? Charlie Bear. Besides yeah. Charlie Just Bear. Kidding. Oh my goodness. Does he have a phone? It used to be it used to be Thea, but now she moved away. Yeah. Aww. Well, it, uh, geographical location <laughs> is nothing. Let's say they can come and show up anytime. It would be Thea. Oh yeah. Good choice. <laughs> Most definitely Thea. She's the best. <laughs> what about someone you don't know? Like if there was someone you could call and demand and be like, hey, I really want to hang out with Christopher Walken. In history. Oh my yeah. God. In history. So cool. Anyone in history, dead or alive. <laughs> yeah, dead or alive, anyone. Christopher Walken would be cool. Oh man, dead or alive. That just makes me think of um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably oh, a fun guy to hang out with. Sure. <laughs> I would like to experience that just to be like, hear his voice. I like the way his voice is. Ever since Total Recall, it's like, ah. but he said my name in Total Recall. What? Yeah. Because yeah, it's Malida. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Can you do a good Arnold Scott? I feel sure like you got that in your, <laughs> in your arsenal. <laughs> okay, you- Charlie Bear. <laughs> Charlie Bear. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear Charlie Bear said by Arnold. By I mean, a half ass impersonator? Mm-hmm. Well, don't drink. <laughs> well, I mean, while you're doing Arnold, I think you have to impress her with Jesse Ventura. Oh, yay! <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess the, these two would be meeting Charlie Bear. It's like, this is Charlie Bear. Nice to meet him. There's some kind of conspiracy with Charlie Bear. He's half, he's half uh, Ewok and he's a Chewbacca <laughs> as well. <laughs> Clearly a part of the Illuminati. <laughs> your your dog is a Freemason, and I know it. I am fully aware of the tax evasions that your dog is pulling on this country and causing unemployed Americans. Do you do this often? Do yes, he not, does. Not <laughs> often enough, in my opinion. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wants it, but yeah, I do it quite often. My alarm clock is actually Scotty being Jesse Ventura. That's how I wake up every Are morning. You serious? And I'm thrilled. <laughs> It's your voicemail, too? Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants it. <laughs> You've reached Johnny LaQuasto. He's out doing secret society things. <laughs> Leave a message. Well, this took a turn for the best. <laughs> yeah. That it did. Oh, my God. All right. Well, they're, they're big movie guys. I see you're wearing a Superman shirt right here. Sure. <laughs> Summer movies. How do they treat you? Yes. Treating me good, even though I've missed, like, a couple. I, I think I missed the last couple of um stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, what's been out so far? Yeah, this... So we had some superhero movies. Suicide Squad. Some yes. Suicide Squad. Yeah. Civil War. Oh, that was good, too. Okay. Was, yeah. So I think, um, for me, <laughs> it was uh, Deadpool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Girl. <laughs> okay. And then um, Civil War and then Suicide Squad. Like, that's okay. how it's ranks. One, two, three. Batman versus Superman? Dawn of Justice? Where was that Looks in there? Looks like she hasn't Uh-oh. seen it yet. Please. No, no, I no. saw it. Everyone, okay, everyone starts getting mad at me when we talk about this stuff. You hated <laughs> it. Did you hate it? 
disappointed. It's okay. I think a lot of people were a little yeah. bit disappointed. It was with a it. lot to take. It's in. not just you. I can I've waited my whole life for this movie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. I grew up with this. This this is the Trinity here. You're wearing a Superman T-shirt. Yeah. You okay, know. I'm sorry, everybody. For those who are Batman fans, like this is this is what's sad. I love them equally. I have a like. I grew up having a crush on Superman and Batman yeah. both. Mm. So that was like m- my love in the beginning. So it's hard for me to choose, but when it but when it comes down to it, when people made me choose, I chose Superman. Aww. <laughs> oh. That's okay. okay though. Truth, justice in the American way. Because everybody that. like nowadays loves the dark brooding Batman. Sure. And I'm so tired of the Batman. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I'm tired of the brooding. Of course, I'm a happy person. Mm-hmm. And to me, when it comes <laughs> to Superman, say. <laughs> <laughs> Superman is just like, it takes a lot. Can you imagine? Okay. Like somebody was doing something. I got, I do celeb VMs. Mm-hmm. So I got a request for somebody saying like, put on one of your old skirts and bend over and say happy birthday and it's you like, get those too <laughs> <laughs> lighten up everybody lighten up those are scotty's favorites actually yeah it's fun yeah. to do but yeah. it's yeah. not oh my goodness he actually just sends them to me and carlin for no reason yeah for no reason. hey guys them. how's this one look he like says, will morning. you please send me money for these <laughs> i send him money to stop yeah yeah works works either way works <laughs> hasn't oh stopped <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, so you, you have to so do celebrity VMs. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get okay. I have my moments where I'm a nice person. I really am a nice person, and I like I am all about spreading joy and positivity. But moments <laughs> like that, I'm just like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Right. So then all of a sudden the heel starts kicking in, and it's like, okay, if I didn't have to be a role model and be a good person, take the higher route, like I would totally chew this guy a new mm, hole. Right. You know, <laughs> like right. oh my goodness. And just like, cause I, 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 it makes me mad that people do stuff like that. So it makes me think of S- Superman. Mm-hmm. Everyone says he's so goody goody and da 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 da. Dude, can you imagine? It takes. It's so difficult to take the higher road. Yeah. So that's why I think that's of a great like, point. So, you know, Superman probably he could smite us all in one heartbeat, like yeah. just a second, boom, we're dead. Just like he said in BBS, <laughs> if, I, if I wanted it, you'd be dead already. Mm-hmm. Next time you get one of those requests, send it to Scotty. Oh yeah. Fold yeah. it over. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll do it. Oh I'll my god. That no shame. <laughs> Yeah, that solves all serious. your problems. I'm, so, yeah. I'm totally gonna do that now. Yeah, yeah, they want it. They'll get it. Yeah, I'll just we'll make sure that it's it's known that it's not you, so they don't go. Oh, what happened to her? She got pale and sickly. Oh boy, not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she cut her hair shorter. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we're now wearing a sleeveless, shirtless denim vest. Yeah, Where'd she oh, pull no. that off? Oh, Why? <laughs> Speaking of hair, though, yeah. I'm digging the short blonde. Oh, as you, can, yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm a fan you of short blonde twins. hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, You're twinsies. I did a pixie cut last summer, and it's been growing did out. You? Yep, it's. Um, oh, I love that. I love short hair. I really do. I, I was wish gonna I had say, the how do you feel? For it, though. No, you pull it off well. You went from a, a long, long brunette to how did you ju- make the jump from the short to the short blonde? What was the big jump for you? This is going to sound like maybe one day I'll tell the whole entire story. There's always a story. <laughs> Women don't just cut their hair for no reason. There's wow. like this long, long story. But to make it shorter, what the trigger was, it's like usually because I had such thick, long hair every mm-hmm. time I'd go like dancing and stuff. And then I guess maybe the way I dance, everyone would assume I'm a stripper because I guess because the breasts and stuff. <laughs> They're like, oh, man are you a stripper or i'd go somewhere and they're like you know do you do porn and i'm like oh, why boy. are people saying this stuff and i some think it's because hi of the hello <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and the hair for some reason it was like i ha- i have yet to get that um question well i got it once but nobody's asked me that since i cut my hair so i got fed up and i'm like well i wish people would stop saying that right <laughs> cut the hair off and mm. i always wanted short hair anyway and since i didn't have wrestling since i was retired yep. i was like don't have yeah. to do that. I don't have to have the long hair to whip for bumps anymore. And you just now, have to try it, you know? And now when you're dancing, people come up to you and say, uh, excuse me, madam, where's the nearest library? <laughs> and so it No, now out. they just say, you're a really good dancer. And I'm oh, like, thank okay. you. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Love it. So Southside Wrestling coming up, Queen of the Ring, Sunday, October 2nd. And then what else can people plan on seeing you at in overseas? Oh my goodness, there's just like a list of things because I'm doing three, I think I'm doing three shows 
that weekend of the second mm-hmm. one's a tag match prior so i don't know everything like you could go to realmelina.com there you go and there's an appearance section that has the whole entire list of all the places but um i'm doing three shows that weekend i think i'm doing two shows the week after um i have two weeks free and then i have three more shows um at the end of the month amazing and then i go to baltimore maryland and then I go for MCW, and then I go to Rhode Island Comic Con the week yeah. after. That's fun. That's fun. And then December is going to be Australia. I'm going to um, Sydney. Woohoo! Well, for work or fun for or wrestling? Both. Okay, great. For both. I'm going to make it both. <laughs> That's need great. To. That's great. So, realmelina.com, at realmelina. And uh, I just want to say, you know, it was, it was such a thrill to have you on, on the tour. On, on, to go to the Middle East and you were just incredible the whole time and uh, the troops really appreciate it and can't wait to do another one. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. I can't wait. And it's been amazing to have you here at Fox Sports. I hope you like yes, it. Yes, thank you so yeah. much I for coming it. in. You thank guys are you. Fun. We try. <laughs> <laughs> try our best. All right, let's go out and rent a, not rent a, let's adopt a walrus. Let's go. Yes. yes. It's done. Love it. <laughs> Love it. That was our cut? That, that was, was our, our cut. <laughs>